and welcome back to Forgotten City. Let's continue our talk with Theseus. I need some selfie resin. Certainly. All I ask is a reasonable price of a thousand denarii. It's not reasonable at all. Mm. You're price gouging over last I think maybe. Well, it sounds familiar, doesn't it? What is wrong with you? Illegal. Simply a question of supply and demand, I'm afraid. Take it or leave it. Did you hear that? Hear what? Uh, that whisper. Ah, uh, you sure you're feeling all right? No, I'm crazy. You're hearing things. Perhaps you should pay a visit to Lucretia's clinic. We don't want another Navia on our hands. What happened to Navia? She claimed the statue was a whispering to her. Nobody else could hear it. Then she shut herself in the palace, and we never heard from her again. But I digress. Do you want this Sylphium or not? Hmm, how would I come up with thousand dollars? That's my concern. But if you get a job, work hard, and save your coins, you should be able to afford it within, say, five years? And how would I just take it instead? Well, if you did that, you'd break the golden rule, and we'd share the same fate as the last lot who lived there. Is that what you want? Is that what you want? Is that what you want? If not, hand them over. No. Do you think I don't know a bluff when I see one? Nice try. Uh, I don't have that kind of money. Very well. Perhaps I can interest you in something within your budget? What's your story? You mean how did I end up here? That is a lengthy tale. Let's hear it. Alright. Well, you see. I'm in the business of procuring rare and precious objects liberated from the enemies of Rome. Mostly sculptures, vases, the occasional slaves. Stolen. Fetch a magnificent price in Roman high society. Had myself a nice little shop in Rome, just off the Forum. Lots of foot traffic and close to the docks. Good place to be when the fires broke out. See, about seven months ago, half of Rome caught on fire. Everyone who couldn't get to an outer gate was running for the river, open to escape by a barge. So I gathered my coins and some priceless vases into a cart and had my most loyal slave girl pretty young thing named a camphor. Push it for me. All the way down to the river, I'm elbowing for a stampede of people, turning back now and then to make sure she hasn't legged it with my valuables. But, to my surprise, we make it. And I see this barge loading up, and it's so full it's almost sinking. But the captain's happy to take my coin. So I start boarding, and then he puts his hand on my chest, and he says, No, too heavy. The cart or the girl. So I did what anyone would have done. You chose the cart, didn't you? Of course I chose the cart. I mean, I can always buy a new slave girl, if I still have my money. So I put me hand on the car, and I guess she realised what was happening because those pretty black eyes of hers go all wide. And in one swift motion, she topples the whole bloody thing into the tiber. I think I see where this is going. Naturally, I dived in after it, hoping to salvage my fortune. Only, I guess I must have hit my head or something, because everything went black. When I came to, I'd washed up on the riverbank, not far from here, with nothing in the world but a single silver coin. Sounds like you got what you deserved, kind of. I couldn't agree more. I mean, sure, I'd lost a few thousand denarii, but I've already made it back, and this place is a veritable treasure trove. Look around you, there must be more gold in here than in the treasury of Rome. If I can just figure out how to get it out of here. You know, are we... Oh, I guess you don't know. Not. If you're desperate, I did hear that Aurelia down at the tavern claims to know of a way out, but I'm not sure I trust her. Some people here are a little shady for my liking. Oh, really? I had it though, this. Oh yeah, gotta watch out. Old Dacius has got your back though. What do you think about the golden rule? It's terrible for inflation is what it is. There's so much gold just lying around, it's practically worthless. At least down here. Of course, I have an idea for generating real wealth, but... What I need is a bow. Just a simple composite bow. I've scoured this city from top to bottom with no luck. But if you happen to find one, bring it to me and we'll talk. Hasn't the Magistrate banned weapons? Oh, well, technically yes, but that just means you'll need to be a little discreet. I see what I can do. You, friend. What are you going to vote for? Aliolus. I mean, Sentius couldn't even keep his daughter safe. What hope does he have of protecting us? I'd like you to vote for Sentius. <laughs> Not going to happen. Okay, I'll be going. Very well. Another time. 
and I'm gonna save. Before I do that, I'm gonna save. Since the voice has told me to do so. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. So stealing is a sin. Oh, a bow. No, don't, don't, please don't. Oh, so that's what that sound was. Weapons. Okay, so we can get a weapon. <laughs> I don't want no, I don't wanna What? I have it? Wait, can I trick uh, yep, this uh, door is Where is this my inventory? A Daenerys and cooked home tablet. Oh, so... Uh, salve, friend. Hi, yeah. I'm Galerius. Mind telling me who you are and what you were doing in the Shrine of Proserpina? I'm Evna and we've had this conversation uh, before. I don't think so. I've never seen you before in my life. I saw you, that doesn't matter. Your name is Galerius and you're about to offer me, offer to take me to see Sanchez so he can tell me about the guru. Oh, I guess how much did I drink last night? Uh, sorry to have bothered you. No problem, I have to go. Oh, and since you seem to be in a hurry, you should try out this device I made. Worked real hard on it. <gasps> Thank you! Just attach the pulley to the rope over the lake and hang on to the handles. If it works, it'll be faster than walking. If it works. And if it doesn't work, worst thing that can happen is you'll take a swim in the lake. I haven't quite summoned the courage to test it myself. But don't worry, it's completely safe. Probably. Yeah, hopefully you're really good. All right, see you around. Scientist or inventor. Try it. How do I do this? Oh, another one. I love it! Hey, whoop! See whether there's another golden statue over here. There's not. Maybe she's still alive. What are you doing in here? Can't yep. you see this woman is dying? She's so she was poisoned. probably alive. She the but she died. Lithium, but okay. that cool as cumulatus decius won't give it to me. I have this resin here, I could. What? Quick, give it here. Yulia, Yulia, you need to swallow okay. this. Here, let me help you. Hopefully, in a moment, she should be able to breathe normally. That was extraordinary. How did you know she needed this exact thing? And at this exact moment? Are you some kind of oracle? Um... I wouldn't believe me if I told you. Ah, uh, look. If you don't want to tell me, I won't look a gift horse in the mouth. But no matter. That was like the gods hearing my prayers and intervening. 
You just saved a person's life, and you should be proud of yourself. She might even be able to thank you herself in a few moments. And maybe she can tell us who poisoned her, and who she meant when she was muttering about that snake's cruel black eyes. In the meantime, I'm happy to help you with whatever it is you need. <laughs> We've been through That's everything. A shame. Thanks again for saving Yulia's life. Apollo smiles upon you. Yeah, I think he's gonna hate me for that. Anything new we can talk to you about? How'd you do? Salve, stranger, and welcome to our idyllic little slice of the Empire. I'm Dacius. Oh. Very well. Another time. Is it you? I think it was a tree. Ah, a new face. Salve, and welcome to a little community. My name's impossible to pronounce for most people, so you can just call me Virgil. I hear we have you to thank for saving Julia's life. I'm glad you arrived when you did. What's your story? Well, I'm an architect. Or at least I was back in Rome. That's probably too grandiose a term to describe what I do here. Help out with repairs and try to stop old buildings from collapsing on people. That kind of thing. But you probably don't want to hear about the ingenious architecture or mysterious history of this place. Mistress history. Tell me about it. Oh, I'm glad you asked. Some of these shrines were constructed hundreds of years ago. Okay. Which means Romans have been arriving here for at least that long. But there's one thing that puzzles me. The oldest shrine in this avenue isn't Roman at all. It's Greek. What does it mean? I'm not sure. It could mean that the Romans who first started building here were just copying Greek architecture, uh, which they do all the time. Or mm. it could mean that there were Greeks living and worshipping here before the Romans arrived. Which begs the interesting question, who really built this place? And could it be far older than any of us imagine? If only there was a way we could talk to the people who came here before us. The stories they could tell. Tell me about this, this architecture. Gladly. Personally, my favorite thing about this place is the aqueducts. Those series of adjoining arches. They're an ingenious feat of Roman engineering with a very practical purpose. They take fresh water coming from outside the city and distribute it all across the chasm. It's funneled below the palace and into a cistern beneath the great temple. Some of it flows down into another cistern beneath the villas. And the rest is funneled to the shrine of Proserpina, that fills the lake, and allows us to fish and farm. They bring water in the city, could we use them to escape? Hey, not so loud. Just talking about that could anger the gods for all we know. I'm not saying it's impossible. But you'd have to find a way inside somehow. Just please try to be a bit more discreet about it. Tell me about the temple up on the bluff. You mean the great temple? This one's a bit of a mystery. Given the way it's positioned so prominently, looking down on us, it's clear that whoever built it felt it was the most important temple in the city. Unfortunately, someone else went out of their way to keep its purpose a mystery. You see, usually a temple is dedicated to a particular god, like Proserpina or Diana or Apollo. Usually, that god is obvious. But in this case, it's unknown. There's an obelisk out the front, which probably used to bear the name of this unknown god. But it appears some barbarian defaced it. And of course we can't get inside because it's locked up tighter than the temple of Saturn in Rome. And that contains the treasury. So we're all left wondering, which god is that temple dedicated to? And... Could it be the one responsible for the golden rule? Unless somebody figures out a way inside, I suppose we'll never know. Eh? Of course, 
something else. Do you know a way out of here? Well, I wouldn't believe how often the new ones ask that question. But I tell you the same thing I tell everyone that. else. There are much worse places to live out your days. You might have a few sleepless nights thinking about the golden rule. But once you get used to the fear, <laughs> knowing that a single slip up could cost you everything, it's not too bad. Nothing new to me, anyway. What do you mean? Oh, I just mean I grew up in the Batavi tribe, far to the north in Novio Magus, and learned to expect a bit of hostility. They weren't nearly as tolerant as the Romans. What do you think about the Golden Rule? Some people say it's divine, the work of a god, but I'm not so sure. It just seems so flawed to me. Like it's distinctly human. I mean, once you've been here long enough, you'll notice people doing things that just seem so wrong to you. But this so-called God doesn't seem to care. Which means one of two things. Either you don't know the difference between right and wrong, or this unknown God doesn't. And I'm pretty sure I know the difference. Do you? I know that the robbery counts as a sin here, so yeah, I think so. Good. Then I hope you'll agree that there are only two ways of dealing with unfair rulers. The first is to leave. The second is to remove the ruler from power. Then it seems leaving may not be an option. How do you move a god from power? Good question. It's best if I say no more, but... I hope you give it some thought. I noticed the graffiti. Why does it sound one thing you're a sinner? Look, I haven't done anything wrong, if that's what you're thinking. Somebody just has a problem with my preference for male company. Okay, let's get this straight. It wasn't uncommon in the ancient realm to have sense, same sex, short term relationship, as long as you were on the giving end. Hey, nothing gets by you, huh? Sorry, that was mean. Y yes, I like men. And when you grow up in the north as I did, in the city of Novio Magus, you expect a bit of hostility. The Batavi are not known for their tolerance. I saw enough friends killed or driven away to know the cost of not keeping your personal affairs to yourself. So I hid who I was for... What was it? Nearly ten years? Watching what I said and where I looked. But that kind of fear eats away at you slowly, until living isn't any better than the thing you were afraid of. Needless to say, since I'm now living underground, halfway across the known world with an assumed name, my openness didn't go down well among the enlightened folk of the Batavi. I'm sorry to hear that. Nice of you to say, but not necessary. In any case, the Romans are far more accepting, and among them, I get to be who I am. Or at least, I thought that was the case. It seems I was wrong. Do you know who's writing the graffiti? Uh, it's not just graffiti. I have quite a collection of handwritten notes too. The strange thing is, I keep my personal affairs to myself. I've never really been interested in any of the men here. Not my type. So I'm not sure what I could have done to upset this person. If I had to guess, I'd say it's probably one of those cultists. What cultists? Strange bunch. They insist there's only one god, and that he considers my nature a sin. Can you believe that? Christians? If there are any of them here, they won't admit it. Not since they supposedly burned down half of Rome last year and went into hiding. Sounds like All Christians. Is, if these threats keep escalating, eventually my secret admirer is going to cross a line and break the golden rule. Let me look into it for what? you. Really? I... I didn't expect that. But thanks. It's always a pleasure to meet someone so selfless. I'm glad you arrived when you did. I'd start by figuring out who the cultists are. Or maybe ask around among the merchants here. Someone who lives or works in the forum must have seen something. But if you find them, Please don't hurt or humiliate them. I suspect they're just confused. I'll see what I can do about that. What are you going to vote for? Well, Maliolis is talking about loosening some of the restrictions in this place. And while it's all a bit vague, at least he has a vision. 
Anything I can do to change that? My vote isn't for sale, if that's what you're asking. Okay, no one wants to vote for you. <laughs> no one wants to vote for a guy. Hmm. Um. Okay, you are close. My trunk. Hurry up, Tupto. It gladdens me to see another foreigner in our midst. We must stick together, you and I. Are you from Egypt? And Egypt? I must say, my sartorial friend, your clothing is most extraordinary. Oh, thank you. Leather boots right. in place of sandals, trousers with precise stitching, and such a curious design. I have traveled distant trade routes from the markets of Damascus to the farms of India, and never have I seen anyone dressed quite like you. Tell me, I must know, from which exotic part of the world do you hail? Uh, I'm from beyond the edge of the known world. world. You are an explorer like me. Yeah. Wonderful. You must have many stories to share. I cannot wait to hear them. Oh no, I'm the one asking questions. I'm here to get to know one another. But for now, do you require assistance? I know you do not require clothing, so information perhaps? Finally, someone that's not hostile or My suspicious. What's your story? Kind of you to ask. I am a tailor and I run the humble shop in the forum. Why set up a tailor shop here? You mean to say, with all the turmoil and terror of the golden rule and so few customers, why bother setting shop at all? Kinda. More or less. I'll tell you, it is precisely because of the golden rule that I wish to remind my friends of the importance of looking one's best. I say, the more of our customs we preserve down here, the more we can preserve a semblance of normality, the better our chances of keeping our heads. Don't you agree? I suppose so. Oh, and there is another reason too. If we all end up as golden statues for future generations to marvel at, I don't know about you, but I would like to look my best. <laughs> How did you end up here? And what? Are, why are you talking about ending up as a golden statue? A good question. A very good question indeed. And I would be happy to tell you if only I could remember it clearly myself. Why? Why? Why the, don't you tell me what you do remember? Hmm. I remember I had just been to Rome to sell an extraordinary selection of wares, and droning in coin, I decided to celebrate my success. I rented a prestigious villa by the Tiber, invited over a few select friends, and we began making our way through some of the most exquisite wine money could buy. Quite a lot of it, in fact. Now, I have had visions and awoken in strange places before. I have even found myself naked in the desert sands more than once, but none of that compares to this. This time, I remember people screaming, then falling into a void as empty as time before creation. Uh, great fire. For air, and then, nothing. When I regained my faculties, I was lying naked by the banks of the Tiber, gods know how many miles from my villa. So we floated down the Tiber. Indeed. I'm lucky I was carrying a little extra weight. <laughs> I believe it kept me afloat. In any case, it seems I'd been <laughs> rescued and resuscitated by a benevolent stranger. I went to find firewood for his campfire, stumbled across a cave and discovered that trapdoor temple. And here I am. Okay. Anything you like. You know, way out of here. Shh. Not so loud. What are you playing at? Did I say the wrong thing? Have you not been told about the last attempt? Last attempt? Oh, then I suppose this duty falls to me. Ah, it is a long story. What? It's not as if I'm going anywhere. Aha, you are weak. <laughs> I like that. Of course, the first question any of us asks when we first arrive is, how do I escape? It is only natural after all. And scaling the chasm wall is out of the question, for it is simply too steep and too far. But as they say, if the wind fails, use the oars. And here the second option is to leave the way we came in, through the shaft above the bathhouse. See, the shaft is quite high, but if one gathered up enough wood, one could make a series of ladders and climb one's way out. I hasn't anyone done that? They have. I am getting to that. There was an attempt, 
made by resourceful fellows who lived here some years ago. They even decided to keep records of their escape attempt for posterity. Unfortunately, as soon as they began to carry the first ladder down the hallway, they heard a godlike voice shake the entire city. And that, tragically, is where their tale ends. So it seems that to merely attempt escape is to invite the wrath of whichever god oversees this place. And so I say, it is best to not even discuss it aloud. Got it. Okay. What do you think about the golden rule? Ah, yes. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. As a Greek, this is nothing new to me. It is how our gods operate. Why do you say that? Have you not heard the tale of the god Hades? I did. He was the first to learn this dreadful lesson when he abducted Persephone and imprisoned her in the underworld. When Demeter, the mother of Persephone, learned of this, she did not punish Hades, the guilty one. Instead, she changed the climate of Earth so that it became hot and dry. Nothing grew. The grain turned to empty husks and the rivers dried up. Innocent people died by the tens of thousands until at last the other gods were forced to act lest they have no worshippers left. So yes, we know this rule. This has always been the case. The golden rule has merely brought it into focus. What can we do about it? If we are to survive, I say we must each keep the simple wisdom of Thales of Miletus, first of the seven sages of Greece, who said, Avoid doing what you would blame others for doing. Sounds simple enough. It does, doesn't it? But it is not enough for us to do this alone. For even if 99% of us adopt this principle, that will never be enough. Yeah. Sadly, no matter how well we protect ourselves, the life's work of many good people can be undone in the blink of an eye by a single selfish act. Ah, uh, well, I've seen that it happen. Ah, the voice of experience. I am sorry for your loss, my friend. But on a lighter note, I will say one thing for the golden rule. For all their grim and haunting poses, these golden statues do make magnificent models for my clothing. Do they not? <laughs> what are you going to vote for? That, my friend, is quite the dilemma. But after some reflection, I'm leaning towards voting for Maleolus. I do not enjoy the thought of another visit from Domitius if I voted the wrong way. Anything I can do to change that? Nothing comes to my mind, my friend. Any idea uh, who's threatening Virgil? This is troubling, is it not? I am afraid I have no idea. It is ridiculous though, Virgil is a fine man. But my young friend Fabia confided in me that she saw someone leaving graffiti on his shop front last night. Perhaps you should ask her about Fabia, that. okay. Hey, thank you. I hope that our paths cross again soon, my friend. And that is going to be it for today, so... Now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye!